How is everyone today? Okay, that's good. Did you eat breakfast? Why not, Nelly? That's good, man. That's good. Nice, nice. Man, I didn't know some people would be late. Because I mean, it's at their house. <laughs> We're still missing five people. <clears throat> okay, so let, let me explain something in the chat to you guys before we begin Yes, um, if you click it, I, I receive a notification and I can lock your mic. I can unlock your mic, I mean. You know, because yesterday, um, I don't know who it was, but it sounded like they were in traffic. And then you have the, the dogs and then you have the the ringing sound. And I don't know, the how do I sound? Does it sound like there's a lot of noise? Magda, look look in the bottom like where you type if you notice there should be a little hand it says status and it has if you click it it gives you six options it gives you raise hand agree disagree speak louder or speak softer all right also if i am talking too loud um please tell me you know to speak softer or if i'm not speaking loudly enough then tell me so i can speak louder Okay, you found it? Good, good. No, 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 the, the mic, I, I have to unlock it. The thing is, you, you raise your hand, 
and I, I will go to you and unlock it. Yes. All right, well, you know, today we're going to try to finish the module two, um, but if we can't, then we will finish it next Saturday. We have five topics left, but they're kind of easy. They're kind of easy, you know, yesterday we did the most important ones. You know, module two is all about planning your classes. And um, I remember yesterday, Magdalena, you, you said that you're worried because your, your plannings aren't as detailed as the one I showed you. But there are different types of plannings. What you, what you did is called the sequence of lessons. And um, that is when you have to like report to the school what you're going to do. And me, well, I, I, I did a detailed daily plan. So, you know, it, it, in, I, honestly, I wouldn't have done it uh, had the school not required it to. But I'm glad that I did because it, it actually does help, you know, for each page that I did, it, it took me about an hour and a half. And I had to do that for all my classes. Six books, 12 units, each book, four lessons. It, it was a lot, but it, it helped me now. Like now I don't have to plan anymore and I can just recycle my lessons. But um, yeah, it, it definitely takes too much time and I know you guys have big groups. And I know that you guys, like every like few years, or maybe every year, you receive a different book if you're working at a public school. And th that's the hard part. Because if you plan for your book, and the next year they say, no, you're, gonna, you're not gonna use the same book. It's like, oh my God, what, what do you gotta do with, what are you gonna do with all your plannings? You gotta throw them away. Um, but that's what we do at the private school. At the private school, we use one book for many years. Yes. So oh, what you guys are doing, it's okay. It's a sequence of lessons. And um, every... Change books every year. Wow. Yes. So that, that that could be a little that could be a little problem. But as long as you have like a rhythm, you know, as long as you have like the basics, like we talked about PPP or TBL, it'll be good. And you know, there's an advantage of not planning in detail. You know, it, it gives you more freedom to adjust to your classes needs but let's begin with a little review A review of yesterday. All right. I'm going to write the question over here, and could you type it into the chat room?
What are the three aims of a lesson? Can everybody see the, the whiteboard? Okay. Well, could you write your answer to this question? What are the three aims of a lesson? Very easy. One of them involves the aim for the teacher. Main. Hello, Maria Belen. Main aim. Personal aim. Okay, let's put them in order. Main aim, subsidiary aim. and personal. Excellent. All right, Maria Belen, we are asking, I mean, we're reviewing the lessons from yesterday a little bit. So if you don't mind, help us out what is the definition or what what does what is the main aim what is the main aim okay Yes, yes, it's the topic a teacher has to teach. And there, is it the most important or the least important aim? Yes. The main aim is the most important aim, definitely. Hello, Daniel. Welcome. Nice to have you here. All right. So Maria Belen and Daniel, like I mentioned to the other ladies, um, today we're going to have everybody's mic off and we're just going to write in the chat room. But if you would like to speak for whatever reason and, you know, it, it's OK. I will turn on your mic. All you have to do is, if you look at the bottom right, you have a little hand like this. It's, if you if you click on it, it says status. Yes, if you if you raise your hand, I will activate your your microphone. All right. So right now I see that Daniel, you have your your hand on. There, I unlock your, your mic, Daniel. Practice. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, I said that, no, uh, thank you for activating my microphone, but it, it was only for um, for practice <laughs> and, I, and I want to, and I want to ask you something about the the files that you send us. Yes, tell me, tell me. Um, what exactly I have to get a copies? Okay. Um, 
Well, first, I, I didn't send the files, so I'm not sure what you received. Yes. Uh, I, I, received... Told them, I, I told them to send everything that's module two. I told uh, them to send everything I, that was module I, two. Material TKT module two. A, 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 everything it. in module two? That's the topic. That's the topic of the the name of the mail. Material TKT module two, uh, and we have two files. The first one is TKT assessment activities, and the other is TKT common sequence. That's all you have. Yes. Uh. Yes, I thought. Yeah, cause, cause some people say they received like twenty eight pages. Uh, the first one. Let me think. The first one is. Because I mean that's only two topics. Oh, yeah, yeah, even yeah, yeah. just yesterday we discussed three. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Wait, wait a minute. Yes. Sorry, it's eight files. Eight files? Okay. Yes. Uh, TKT assessment activity, TKT common sequence, TKT lesson aims, TKT lesson plan components, TKT teaching aids, TKT supplementary materials, TKT use of course book materials, TKT use in reference resources. Okay, okay. Yeah, it, it should be eight topics. Mm hmm. Eight yes. topics. Exactly. Yes. Great, great. I'm glad they did it right. <laughs> and I, I um, have to, to train everyone. Um, well, we already did three topics yesterday, and um, today we're going to do. We're going to try to do the other five. I'm pretty sure we're not going to have time for one. Um, but I, I will be showing you the the files that we're working on. Mm -hmm. Here on the on the screen. Uh huh. And you know, I will tell you to get it. Oh, it's sequencing lessons, mm -hmm. um, the first worksheet, and then you can go and get the first worksheet because I know okay. it's a, it's a lot of pages. Did you receive okay. like everything I'm talking about? Like even the lesson plan of the of the lessons? Mm. Yes. Or just the worksheets. Um. TKT assessment activities, TKT common sequence, lesson aims in eight supplementary materials, use of course book materials, reference resource. Okay. Okay. Well, as long as you have it, it it's good. Do you have it printed out? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you have everything. Um, who knows? Maybe you can teach the TKT module too, since you have all the material now. <laughs> and um, oh, all of them, I have to print. Yeah. Maybe you can teach okay. it. Make a little. Make a little group. Okay. Okay. Brenda. I unlock your mic. All right, then I'm going to take you off a little bit so Brenda can yeah. speak. I just want to tell Danny that inside of the PDF file was the whole papers there. There are 28, and your lesson plan is not there, if that's what you mean. It's just okay, the okay. it's in just that. Just the worksheets. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, just... Danny, you, you should take off your your raised hand. All right, brother. Thank you. So, with those five, with those five um, topics that you received, they are twenty eight pages in total. Yeah, twenty eight. Okay. Cool. That's great.
Well, Ila, welcome to welcome to the group. And um, well, Ila, whenever you'd like to speak, you know, raise your hand. Uh, if you look at the bottom right, there is a, a status hand that looks like this. If you click on it, you will have like six options and you can click raise hand, agree or disagree. Okay. And then if you raise your hand, I will activate your mic. That way we're not talking over each other and, um, you know, hearing extra noise. All right, great. So let's go back to the review. The main aim, the main aim is the topic teacher has to teach. The main aim is the most important aim. Nice. Do you have anything else that you could add to the main aim? Or that's all? Okay. All right, yeah, that, that's basically the, the gist. The gist is like the general top, the general meaning, right? Oh, that, oh, that's a good one, Nelly, that's a good one. Nice, nice Spanglish. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, now, let's see. What What is a an example exponent? What is an example exponent? Some questions? <clears throat> Sentence? Ah, there we go. An example. Example of of what? Example of the topic. Yes. Nice, nice. Let's see, let's do an example. All right, so this is the example aim. What could be What could be an example exponent for this aim? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, um, well, actually, Magdalena, it, it depends on the topic you want to to discuss. Like, wood is nice. It's, rare, it's really neutral. It can be formal or informal. But let's say you want to be um, really, really informal. You wouldn't say wood. You would say, want to, do you want to come to my party? Hey, yo, I'm having a party this weekend. Be there. Or let's go to a party. Yeah, it's Daniel. It, it, it all, that's why it's important to include the example exponent because um, one aim could have many example exponents. But the example exponent is so you can like look at it before the class starts. It's like, okay, this is what I'm doing. All right. So everyone is good on main aim? Yes. All right, nice, nice. Maybe when this when this coronavirus thing is over, I will come observe one of your classes to see what your main aims are. All right. So now let's talk about the subsidiary aim. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the coordinator. I would just observe. I would like to see how you, you know, engage with your students and stuff like that. How you present the class. It would be interesting. All right, uh, a subsidiary aim is. What? Okay. Oh my God, nice words, Maria, Maria Magdalena. Subsequent. Related to the main time. Nice, nice. Nice, nice. Yeah, subsidiary aim is a subsequent aims that will aid the main aim, that will help the main aim. And I see some of you included some examples of like vocabulary. Vocabulary is definitely um, an example of a, of a sub-skill. What, what are the types of Okay, specific content. What do you mean when you say specific content? Or specific context, sorry. What do you mean by specific context? Maria Belen?
all yes those are good use of expressions grammar grammar can even be the that oh, okay 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 no you're correct you're correct like if the main aim is inviting people to a party you can also include offering drinks that could be a sub skill offering food okay it can be the grammar it can be pronunciation etc Yes, basically the sub skills help I me mean, sorry the sub aims help the main aims that is basically it and let's do the personal aim What are personal aims? Let's see, Ila, you're really quiet. What is a personal aim, Ila, if you don't mind answering for us? Nice, nice. Okay, okay. Now, you know, th thank you, thank you. Yes, is that objective for the teacher? Okay, how to improve? Definitely. Definitely. Now, yesterday we didn't go much into detail about this, but what are some examples? Examples of personal aims. And this one, everybody, if you don't mind sharing an idea, it'd be nice. Okay. Have to introduce an idea. More speaking practice. Okay, explaining grammar well. Daniel, what do you mean by use the presentation? Okay.
help me with the presentation to explain. Could you explain that to us? Oh, yes. I see everybody. Maria Belen, yes, the material. Oh, Magda, those are good questions to ask yourself. Did you make mistakes? Do these dynamic activities work? Okay. All right, good, good. So with the, with the three aims, everyone is pretty good, right? It's easy, it's a piece of cake. Yeah, these are one of the things that you're gonna see on the TKT, but you shouldn't be very worried about it because it's one of the easiest topics. All right, cool. Let's move on to the next part. Now, that was the first topic we discussed. Now, the next one, do you remember what was the next topic? Oh, oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my daughter. From now on, I will ask um, if I can erase. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yesterday we discussed three topics. Do you remember what the second one was? Choosing assignments, assessments. Choosing assessment activities. You, you can see the class in um, on YouTube. But I, I'm just not seeing that they didn't upload the link to you guys. Uh, probably today they will upload the link See the the coordinated the coordinator goes into our accounts and has to upload it to YouTube and then she sends the the links to Mr. Chavez and Mr. Chavez sends it to all the groups. Um, I, I guess yesterday they couldn't do it because there were a lot of people on the computers and they were still working from the school. So it like if they try to upload the file onto YouTube while there are many teachers giving their classes online, then it would have disrupted their classrooms. But I don't know, today I, I will call the coordinator and talk to her, okay? And we, we will have the, the videos to you today and if not today, then tomorrow for sure. 
both of them, the one for the one from yesterday and for the one for today. All right, no problem. All right, yes, it's choose me an assessment activities. All right. Now, in general, in general, we have two types of assessment activities. We have formal and informal. When do we assess our students? Let's see if you remember the answer to that question. When do we assess our students? All the time, very good. All the time. Like right now, I am evaluating you. I'm making sure that you understood the things from yesterday. And right now, the type of evaluation that I'm doing on you, the type of assessment I'm doing on you, is it formal or informal? Why is it informal? Okay. Nice, nice. So formal assessments. Use a rating. I don't even know what to call that. You're going to say formal assessments use grading. Yes, it's just brainstorming. Informal assessments don't use grades, just opinions. And feedback. All right, what are some examples of formal evaluations or formal assessments? Exams, tests, Projects, okay, there, there are more, there are more.
homework. That's good. Oral tests, essays. Yes, my dad, that, that is true. Homework for the TKT is considered informal. But some people, they give, they give a score or they give you a grade. So let me, let me adjust this. If given a grade. Yes, yes. Unless you see that it says, if you just see that it's homework, consider it informal. But if you say homework, if given a grade, then you would see formal. And informal. <laughs> homework. Nice. Brainstorming. Review. Discussing experiences. Patient. Role play. Oh, that's a good one. I gotta write that. Role plays. Speaking. All right, and that is all for the assessment activities. Can I erase it? Okay, I will, I will wait, Daniel, I will wait. Screenshots. Okay. Nice. Daniel, let me know when you're you're ready. Okay. And one more thing, let's fly through this. Components of a lesson plan. What are what are some components?
okay? The main aim, sub aims, personal aim. Nelly, you said competence, competence. What, what, what is that? Okay. And and what do you, what do you mean by that? Today. Time. Okay, beginning, developing, closing. Okay. All right, Nelly, I'm going to activate your mic. Explain what that means. Beginning, developing, closing. Ellie? No. Is the body of the lesson plan? Yes, but, but we, we didn't mention that in the TKT yesterday. Were you, were you here for this part? We had the main aim the class profile. Can somebody tell me what the class profile is? It's not a part of the component. No, it's not a part of the component. Or what, or what do you mean by component? Daniel, I'm activating your mic. Yes, it, it, it is a description of the class, like. I'm sorry. Sorry, Mister. Uh, uh, component is I. I was trying to say the component, no component. And what do you mean by that? 
Um, the parts of the lesson plan that we talked about yesterday. Oh, yes. I was trying, but, um, to, I was trying to say that um, the, the beginning, development, and closing is not a part of the of the components of the to the TKT. Yeah, according to TKT, you know, it's, it's not. Mm -hmm. That's all, mister. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, yes, the class profile is the level of the students, how many students we have, basically who we are teaching. And let's see. What else do we have? W what is What is that thing? that tells you which part of the course you are in. That tells you the lesson that you taught before and the lesson that you're gonna to teach tomorrow. The date and the time. Well, it, it's not, the date and the time is not mandatory to the TKT. It, yes, it is a timetable fit. The timetable fit is the what we taught yesterday, what we're teaching today, and what we are going to see tomorrow. The date and the time is not necessary. Um, but what is necessary is the timing. Timing is how much time you spend on each activity. So I, I wrote the date and the time. Okay, okay, look. The, the date and the time is used if your school requires it. If it doesn't, oh, 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 you're talking about the, what I wrote on my lesson plan that I showed you yesterday? Oh, you're talking about here. Here, let me explain. Now, the day and the time can be useful in some cases, but it is not required on the TKT. Now, the reason why is because you can teach the lesson today and you can teach the same lesson tomorrow. So it, 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 is, it is something that is constantly changing. It's just like your class profile is and um, well, e either way, you should you should include it in your lesson plan, even though it's not listed in the TKT book. In fact, if if you look at the TKT book, um, it, it won't mention it. But for us, you know, it it is important to have it because sometimes our school asks for it, right? The date and the time. And well, we also have the, stage aims. What else do we have? Sorry, Magdalena, I'm going to activate your mic.
procedures. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, I just want to ask if the date and time is part of timetable fit or it's uh, another one separated. Yeah, it, it's it's separated. The the timetable fit it just shows you which part of the course you are in. Schedule. Like, yeah. It, uh, for example, if the students learn the the simple past with regular verbs yesterday, today you're going to, you can teach them the simple past with irregular verbs, and then maybe for tomorrow you can teach them the past continuous, and it, it just gives you a, a timetable like of everything you're going to do, not necessarily the date and the time, but the sequence that you are following. Okay. Yes. That's it all. Thank you. All right. No problem. Procedures. What is that thing when you, when you think your students know something? All right, assumptions. There are something else. Sorry, there is something else. We have the problems. Anticipated problems. And solutions. What is it? Oh, teaching aids, yes. Teaching aids. What is that thing called where we decide whether we're going to put our students in pairs or they're going to work individually as a group? Interaction, yes. All right, cool. Well, we also have homework. All right. Uh, they might. Are we missing anything? Yes. Sometimes you can include it at the end of your lessons. And, and this one is actually inside the the TKT components. All right, so that is it for the review. Let's begin. That's good. That's all right. All right, everybody can see the slide. All right, good. So planning an individual lesson or a sequence of lessons. 
that is the first thing we're going to discuss today planning an individual lesson or a sequence of lessons so when planning an individual lesson we need to think about the aims the shape of the lesson the kind of techniques that are most appropriate for the particular groups of learners for example when introducing a new topic we might be willing to use the PPP or the TBL but skills lessons have also a shape that we need to organize all right so basically we we take a look at what we're going to do or what we need to teach and figure out how we can plan it to make it the most appropriate for our learners now we also need to think about the connection between the aims and the procedures the available material, the length of the lesson, and the information we have about our learners. The most important thing is to make sure that tasks, materials, and activities will help a particular group of learners achieve the aim. All right. This is, this is very important. Every activity that you do should help you achieve your aims. It should help you achieve your aims. Whether it's your main aim or your sub aims or personal aims, every activity that you do should help you achieve your aims. You shouldn't do an activity just because you want to. You know, everything that you do needs to help your aims. If your aims are to practice your, your speaking and your listening, then you shouldn't have a writing activity unless you think it's necessary. But only, only you will be the judge of that. Which is where every activity should lead up to the aims that you have always considering the students their level and their needs all right and a sequence lesson is a number of related lessons that develop language knowledge or language skills over a period of time and this the, the sequence lesson is what most public schools do here in mexico You know, they, the sequence of, the sequence lessons, they don't go into detail. They don't show you the presentation, the, the stages, the activities. They don't show you the resources. They just give you like a general understanding. So here, here we have an example of a sequence lesson, right? So we have the structural sequence. We have revision, the past simple. You can do that in, let's say, Monday. You can review the past simple. Tuesday, you review the present perfect. And on Wednesday, you contrast the past simple and the present perfect. But if you notice, it doesn't include your activities. It doesn't include your resources, anything. It's just showing you like the what you're gonna do in class that day. Um, yes, it, it, it also looks a lot like the one that Magdalena sent me. Uh, I wasn't able to put it on here, but Magdalena's it, it showed like, for example, February twenty-five grammar, February twenty-six um, vocabularies. I, I don't I don't remember, but. It was something like that. And <laughs> the, 
the integrated skills sequence. Question, Daniel? All right. Well, that that is one sequence. You know, if you are focusing only on grammar, you know, your school wants you to show me what grammar you're going to be teaching, then you can do the structural sequence. If your school is more like skills related, you can do the integrated skills sequence. For example, vocabulary development, places, reading, writing. That is another type of sequence. And then you also have project work. You know, this one is very common at the end of the course, at the end of the level. And basically you have something general about the project. Reading about free time activities, do a class research and survey, and the preparation of posters. Monday, you read about the free time activities. Tuesday, you do survey research. And Wednesday, they prepare the posters. And maybe Thursday, they present. Yeah, Daniel, exactly. You, you just, it's basically to report to the school what you're going to teach. But you're not going to go into detail about it. All right, let's see. Irving, how are you feeling? Irving, you there? So, so. Okay, man. Well, it's nice to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Brenda, would you mind reading the first line and the six questions, please? Okay. Uh, when planning an individual lesson, we have to ask ourselves, will the topic be interesting for our students? Are the activities in teaching material at the right level for all the learners? Have I planned enough for the time available? Do I need extra material? Have I planned too much? Are there any stitches I can cut if necessary? Have I told exactly about how to plan and end the lesson? Does each step of the lesson help to achieve the aim? All right. No. May I continue? No. No, it's okay, it's okay right there. Now, I, I want you to reflect. Reflect. And on your notebook, I want you to Right. What questions you actually ask yourself? Or try to answer? And which ones you could improve on? Now, I know that you're not going to say, hmm. Will the topic be interesting for my students? No, like, I, I I know you probably won't do that. But for example, you think, how can I make this class fun? And that, in a way, answers number one. So on, on your notebook, could you write that down, please? Can you, uh, can you take a screenshot or a picture of it? Because I'm going to... Do something with the screen. Let me know when you're ready. Mm. 
Brenda Daniel Irving. Yes, um, take a picture of this slide because I am about to take it off for one or two minutes. And I want you to, on a piece of paper, write down which questions you ask yourself and which questions you don't ask yourself, all right? you know. With, with, with honesty and we're going to have like um, we're going to help each other and give each other ideas Leila about the questions here uh, will the topics be interesting for our students are the activities and teaching material at the right level for my okay no 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 the let's see let me see if I can um, Yeah, th those questions right there. For example, you can say, yes, I do number one. I always try to make my classes interesting. Or no, I don't do number one because my school doesn't allow me to have fun in my, in my class. All right, I'm about to take it off. Please, it is... 10.22 and 10.25, we will begin discussing. So please begin with that.
All right. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay. Brenda, Ila, yes, okay, so let's begin with, let's see, I have Brenda at the top, so we're going to begin with Brenda. Brenda, which questions do you ask yourself when you are planning? Could you turn on your mic and tell, tell the class? Yes, I answered the six questions. Not all of them, of course, I made them when I am planning. But, for example, number one, will the topic be interesting for our students? This is not something that I really ask myself each time that I am going to, to plan. However, what I do is to try to contextualize each topic that we're going to talk about. I mean, I think in examples that they will really understand or relate to, to their daily life. In that way, they can feel this more approachable that's what i do okay all right and the rest you you also ask it to yourself uh, yeah i try to for example um, number two i usually don't focus on the material i have been sorry my mic uh turn off um I usually don't focus on the material I I use because I have a book in in my school that I work in. They are like I don't know how to explain. The point is that the only important thing is the book, nothing else. Not even if the students really learn or not. So most of the time I just focus on the book. However, I bring extra material that I I think it can help to my students. Nice, nice. And um, do you always make sure you have extra activities? Not always. Not, Not always. always. Yeah. Okay. It's have you ever planned too much? Uh, yes. And I have to cut off some activities. Most of the time or most of the lessons I have to cut off like three or more exercises or activities because the book we use, it's really extensive. So we have a short time to to achieve this, to finish the book because that's the main point there. So I'm always putting off and I try to link the activities one to each other. That, that would be my answer for Question six, mm, I try to link all the activities uh, I, in order that all of them can help me to achieve my goal, whichever it is. All right, very good. Do you have any tips for us on how we can go about with any of these questions? Um, maybe I think that always we should think in the kind of students we have, the kind of group it is and if it really fits to your student. If not, you need to find a way to, to make the topic fit to your students. Okay, nice, nice. So even though the book doesn't have an appealing topic, we can find a way to make it appealing. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Nice. 
Okay. Thank you so much, Brenda. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Godinez. Would you mind sharing your information? <clears throat> yes. I'm gonna eat my banana. Sorry, uh, I, I, I can hear you. What was your question? Can you share what you wrote down? Sorry? Can you share what you wrote down about the six questions? Okay. Um, I think I asked myself, uh, number one, is something like, like the Brenda said, because I have a, a, an, a topic for my books, but um, the topic um, most of the time is very higher to my students. So I have to, to try to achieve uh, the more cl close uh, to the to the book ask but um, I have to to try to 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 teach uh, something about the topic because my students uh, don't have any any idea about the the, the language but the book ask uh, to do something in a higher level so I have to uh, adapt I have to to make it fit to the the topic according to my students. So I have to, to change the activity. That's the answer for the question number two. Um, sometimes I plan it um, exactly time. Sometimes I, 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 I have to, to arrange to the, another week uh, to plan and uh, at this activity that I don't that, that I didn't the last week to, to put in the in the in the new week. Um, and what is the number five? Uh, never uh, according to the question number five, <clears throat> I never I the most of the time I I I don't have the result about how I plan. I have to change uh, something, especially because I have a uh, uh, seven groups, so I have to change uh, according to the groups. And the number six, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's not. Mm hmm so so you think number six is your area of opportunity where you can yes. make sure that each step helps achieve the aim mm -hmm. all right uh, well what, what do you what do you think what, what do you think can um can help you with with that part like, you know, if you have an aim, you know, a a everything should be um, about that aim. I think that I was trying <clears throat> is to make more easy, easier. Make it easier. Uh, because uh, because I, I said the topic is, uh, for example, that I told you uh, last class, and the topic asked me that, they have to know about present perfect, past perfect, etc. But my students even know, uh, or real, rarely they know the 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 simple past, for example. Or another students they don't know the simple present. So I have to to remember every every time expressions. So it's very very difficult to to me. Because um, it's very higher to the to the level the book ask, especially books ask uh, make uh, an activity. For example, make make an easier, make a presentation, uh, explain uh, 
maybe a, um, uh, it's a, right now it's according to a, make, make a cartel into the uh, electronic device, uh, the, the instructions. So they they don't want to to to, to talk. They don't they don't know uh, how to write. So I have to to, to give uh, expressions. I have to give ways to to how how to write, etc. Okay. So you know, so I, I'm, I, I what I'm I, guessing I, is I, that. The... Yes. yes. No, I I I was saying that I have to change. Um, uh, the book said I, I, I have to, to use something in the book. I have to use uh, material on the internet. I have to to look, uh, to search, look in uh, very different materials. Okay, okay, nice. But I, I, I see that the, the main problem there is that your school gives you work that is too advanced for your students, right? Yes. All right. And that, that tends to happen a lot in the in public schools. Yes. Um, guys, in, in the in the chat room, what what suggestions do you have for when that happens? When your school gives you B1 material for an A1 student or gives you B2 material for an A1 student, well, what suggestions do you have for that? If you don't mind, could you write it in the in the chat board? Magdalena, we are we are asking or giving suggestions to when the as what we can do when the school gives us material that is too advanced for our students. Like Daniel says that uh, his school has given him the present perfect, past perfect, etc., and his students don't even know the simple present. All right, Nelly says to just take the grammar topic and look for activities that cover the student's needs. Okay, that's good. <laughs> she skips the book. All right. What, what, what do you think about that one, Daniel? Do you think you should skip the book?
Yeah, that, that's that's a big problem right there. And the students have to pay for that book, right? <laughs> I like that one in Barradita del tema. How could you say that in English? By teaching them the superficial activities, not get into depth. Okay, but my question is: Do do your students, your students have to pay for those books? Yes, my my yes. See, that that's what that's where the problem is. If you know, if your students had to pay for the books, then if you if you don't use the books, the parents are gonna be like, "Hey, you made me spend money. You didn't even use the book." You know, there the the parents would be the problem. But for example, if you if the parents don't pay for the book, and you know what they will be evaluated on in the end of the exam then you can just use small parts of that book. Like if, if you know at the end of the semester, they have to know the simple present, the simple past, and would. But your book is asking you for many different things and the topics are boring, that you yourself can make the topic interesting and not have to use the book. The, but the problem is when the students have to pay for the book because well, you know, the parents are going to complain for having to buy the book and stuff like that. Um, I, I have to say something. Yeah, yeah. A, go ahead. In a, in a public school, um, the government um, supposed that the, the kids uh, know the language, the basic knowledge. In yes. the schools, it's, it's supposed that they give the the basic level and when they arrive in the secondary school it's supposed that they have a uh, level a2 or b1 uh, and that's and that's a wrong that's wrong even that's a wrong assumption <laughs> they don't have any a1 even <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it happens. It happens a lot. So it's uh, the books is is with a level B one or maybe A A two, but it's a B one to the to the top. Wow! So it's very difficult to 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 do the activities that the book said. But I I choose some some of them. I have to look in uh, in another. In another place and other activities, I have two or three different of one of them, one of them, one of them. Okay. Or get a copies from from the internet. I, I like this activity, so I I, I do I to get a cop to uh, make make copies and give to my students. Okay. But it's something oh, yeah. like 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 Brenda said. Uh, it's you uh, know Magdalena said. Um, uh, because they, I, I, I have to to follow with my content, so I have to to go on. You know? Yeah. But that's yes, true. It's something like Magdalena said. Exactly. Yes. All That's right. right, Magda. So, 
do, do you think you would get in trouble if you only use specific activities in your book but everything else you plan on your own because i I, I feel like on, on that aspect, government schools are making a big mistake, mm -hmm. assuming that the students know A2 or, or the students are at A2 or B1 by the time they get to middle school. That is mm -hmm. a big assumption. And um, well, yes, it is. You know, as, as a teacher, you know, you know that teaching them B1 material when they're A1 students is not going to work. Mm -hmm. so you know you have to teach them from the bottom you have to teach them the verb to be mm -hmm. simple press yes but you know do you think that you will get in trouble if you teach them the basics and do only small parts from the book to kind of like make them catch up to where to where they're supposed to supposed to be <laughs> Yes, because the booth asks to make a project at the end of the unit. So you, you have 10 units and you have to achieve the project. And, and they maybe one project is, is writing, another project is speaking, another project is, um, for example, in second grade, in this month, in March, the project was or is uh, act. Uh, uh, play in an English language, so it's it was it would be very difficult for them. Yeah, maybe something in a role play, and that's all. And a very uh, uh, short moment of the something play. Okay. Well. And who who grades those projects at the end of the at the end of the semester? No, it's only for the second grade in a, a middle school. Yeah, but but who who grades it? You? Yes, me. And, and and that's my question. Do you think you will get in trouble if you teach them what they need to learn instead of what they should? I Learn. have to say, uh, in, if I don't say anything, no. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I have to to give my my lesson plans to my so coordinator, what? but my coordinator oh, my doesn't know don't, don't, doesn't know the if I have to to to. to because I, I only have to, to follow my, my um, I don't remember, the, the syllabus. So I, I have to, I will have, have to, to change the, the syllabus. And um, man, that's what I would do, man, because you know, it's not fair to the students. Yes, I know. It's not fair to the students that, you know, they know nothing. Yes, it's very difficult. And they expect to teach them advanced things like, you know, if we look at it from a teacher's perspective, we know that it's wrong. Yes. And we have to focus on the, you know, the foundation, you know, mm -hmm. we had mm -hmm. to lay the foundation Sorry, I I think that's that's why uh, there exists a placement test. In my school, we have the placement test, but the problem is it's continuing. When well, first of all, uh, we have ten levels, nine levels. Okay, so when the students do a placement test and they have a good level, obviously they they go ahead in another level. So they we try to change to the level with another group that they are, it's supposed that they are. But the problem is that maybe they finish the nine levels, but um, they are on second quarter, 
because in my school we have quarters, not semesters. So if when they go to maybe the fifth, the fifth uh, quarter, they have finished the nine levels. So what do we do with those students that it's supposed that has a good level and they finish all the levels? It's it is the same. So, so many you, they are they are obligated to take the English. Classes. Yes, it's part of this of their schedules. Suppose that they cannot finish the schools if they don't have English in one of my schools, but in the other, they may fail. Maybe they go to I don't know how to say extraordinario, and if they pass, they can continue. Okay. Well, actually, that's the first time that I heard about that situation. Let me think what you could do there. When, when you have, can I say you, can I say you my, 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 my book, for example? Yeah, you can, you can send it to my email. Can you write your email, please? Yes, of course. All right, so Magdalena, usually when we have a student who is too advanced in our classes, we put them in a higher group. Yeah. But in, in your situation, that's not possible. So what you could do is, is bring extra material that is appropriate for their level. Most of you the know, time but, they but, get bored. Yeah. And, and 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 that's the problem. Like we had to find it, we had to make it interesting. Find out what they yes, what they are interested in, and you know, have them sit sit to the side or make them the teacher's helper yeah. or something. <laughs> Most of the times, uh, we ask them to help their their classmates, but there are just a few that really help them because they want to finish faster. And what they do is give the, the correct answers, and that's how uh, they uh. help the <laughs> classmates. So because they want to finish faster and go to the break, or I don't know, so it's not it's not uh, the correct way to help. <laughs> yes, yeah, not. Um, you know, uh, what do you think about this? What do you think if you teach them how to teach English? And, you know, that will give them, okay, well, first, that will give them something to look forward to. And it'll give them valuable skills. And that value will motivate them. But of course, you have to tell them in like a convincing way because, ah, oh, and you want me to work. Oh, man, you gotta do this. But if, but if you say it like in a nice way, like, "Hey, man, do you want to try something? What teach?" You? And then you know, explain it to them. You know, obviously, don't teach them all your tricks, because I know you have a lot of tricks, Magdalena. But <laughs> you can uh, teach them. You know, just the basic things about you know teaching, like maybe how to elicit or. Um, how to explain simply and clearly and stuff and, and making sure that they don't give the answers, you know, stuff like that. So it can, so they can feel important and, you know, by helping others, it will give them a sense of identification and maybe they won't get bored, but, but that's just one, that's just one suggestion that that's what I would do. And another issue is that sometimes we have uh, native speakers. So they are obviously oh. are very good speakers, but in grammar, most of times they have problems. So that's the yeah. way that maybe we can uh, give them exercises, worksheets, I don't know, reviews. But yeah. they get bored faster because they suppose or they, you know, they believe that they are 
but they know everything. Are, are those your college students? Uh, yeah, it's students. Your college students? Yes. Maybe you could give and them um, they are video activities. They're forced to have it, right? They need those credits. Yeah. Because they do a placement test. And in a speaking, they are great. But when we do a grading test, some, some, most of times they are, they have uh, mistakes. They're low. On vocabulary, um, I think you know, that they know more than, than we, but in grammar is not like that. You know, find out their interests, find out their interests and find out what they are you know, the best that you say that they're the best at speaking, maybe you can make them do some, some speaking activities, put them on, put them First. on a, um, what's that thing called? Like give them a, a pen pal, or if, if, they're, if, they're, if they're suffering with the grammar, give them some grammar activities, but related to the things that they are interested in, maybe the person likes soccer, and you can find a lot of um, soccer materials online, and you know, print it out, give it to them. Or if, if they are interested in um, in cars, find out something about cars, and you know, there, there's a there's a way to you know find out about your students, and to make it interesting for them. Uh, I think I think that's the that's the biggest thing we have to you know kind of dig deep and find out what what they like and why they like it and how we can apply it in our teaching. Okay. So if, if you if you ever have time, you know it, it'd be a good idea to just you know tell that student and hey, can you stay with me for two minutes and talk to them? Hey. You know, I see that you're kind of bored in my class, and I don't want to. I don't want you to be bored in my class all the time. Um, can I ask you some questions? And you know, asking like, what, 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 what things do you like? like what, what are your hobbies? You know, um, what, what are your goals in life? And stuff like, you know, get, get dig deep in there, and then you can use that material. You can use that information to find the adequate material. Thank All right. you. Let's continue. I think that we. Yes. Well, uh, look. Before we go on the break, let's finish reading this this slide. Um, Magdalena, since you're here, could you read it for us, please? Okay. When planning a sequence of lessons or scheme of work, we can decide about making it detailed or general. Both cases will help us organize the syllables or the course units to cover in the time available. This also help us think what we want to achieve and include enough variety of activities. While with the tape, Pani remind us about what general aims are and how to achieve them. Planning with weeks in advance make it difficult to predict our learners' need and how to fit them. On the other hand, not detailed planning give us a lot of freedom to respond to learners' needs but it did not have any reminders about our different aims and procedures. Procedures. Teachers and learners need schemes of work to identify how lessons are linked and the way your procedures match or aims. That's all. Right. Yes. Now this is the, um, what did Nelly say? <laughs> we have an alarm? No, I, I, I don't I don't have an alarm for the break. <laughs> I don't have an alarm. But I have the clock right here next to me. The hungry alarm. <laughs> yes. Well, basically we can make the planner general or specific. Now, you know, it it's it's very difficult to make a detailed lesson plan. If you plan weeks in advance, like let's say you plan for one month, it's, it's kind of difficult 
because you don't know if next week they're going to understand the lesson or not and you might have to spend more time on it or you don't know if you don't know if they're going to fly through all of the lessons now what what i recommend is you know obviously for your sequence of lessons you have to do something for your school and show them what you're going to teach in the semester in the quarter in the month whatever but if you're going to write if you're going to make detailed lesson plans kind of like the one that i showed you yesterday then you should do it only for one week okay you know on the weekends okay this week i'm going to teach this that way if something messes up this week okay well next week you can plan again but if you plan for a month it's kind of difficult to you know to modify a whole month you know and if you only plan for one day then you're gonna plan monday plan again tuesday plan again wednesday and that's not healthy so if if you're gonna plan detail i recommend doing it for um a week all right and always keeping the students in mind okay and well guys um i will see you at 11 30. okay maria belen welcome back and provecho okay i hope you guys eat a nice breakfast and we're going to do a lot of activities when we come back so please eat something good Thirty-three, Mister.